Warning. The following broadcast contains both strong and graphic language, which may be offensive to some listeners. Strong words such as love, faith, victory, and the name of Jesus may be used. This broadcast will graphically magnify the integrity of God's Word and the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan will be ridiculed, spoken of disrespectfully and shown to be a defeated foe, which may make some listeners uncomfortable. Pastor Glenn's messages may not be suitable for stuffy believers. Therefore, listener discretion is advised. Welcome to today's broadcast, you mighty earth-shaking, history-making, mountain-moving, giant-killing, demon-stomping, water-walking champion. God is with you. God is for you. God is your defense. You can't go under for going over. God's making a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert for you. I'm Pastor Glenn. It's Miracle Monday. Let's get energized on the Word of God. I'm going to start by reading two psalms or two scripture cards for you. It's uh, like five five verses. Psalm 20, verse 8, people will stumble and fall, but we will rise and stand firm. I like that. People are going to stumble and fall, but we're standing firm in Jesus' name. Our feet is on the rock. Jesus. Psalm 21, verse 2 through 4, you have given me my heart's desire. You have answered my request. You came to me with great blessings. You set a crown of gold on my head. I asked for life, and you gave it, a long and lasting life. Yeah, God's manifesting, materializing, giving to you what you ask for when you ask for stuff based on the Word of God. Find a scripture that promises you what you need and pray that scripture back to God. Heavenly Father, this is what you said. You read it to him. I believe I received that in Jesus' name, and you, and Jesus said, whatever I ask you in his name, you're going to give it to me, so I believe I receive it. I have it now. Psalm 27, verse 1 through 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I like that it's using the word my, not just our or Israel's. It's saying my. You've got to do that. You, I hope by now that you have memorized Psalm 91 and personalized it using every single verse. You say me, my, or I. In every verse, and you say it over and over again till you can uh, um, just quote it. Just just read the first word of that verse, and you can say the whole verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I will fear no no one. The Lord protects me from all danger. I will never be afraid. Wow. When evil men attack me and try to kill me, they stumble and fall. Listen, because of the open border, and I'm serious, whoever allowed that is guilty of treason because they've put us in clear and present danger. And already gangs from uh, Venezuela are killing people in uh, other states in, in New York. Already people, kids are being kidnapped because a lot of gang members, a lot of pedophiles, a lot of people from prison, and of course, a lot of terrorists, thousands and thousands of terrorists have walked through the border. And so in the days ahead, I'm saying in the next two to three years, America is not going to look like it looks now. I mean, if you think about it, 10 men with a rifle sniping at people in 10 different malls in America, nobody would go to a mall. And there's thousands of terrorists here that hate Americans and want us to die. And so you've got to find verses like Psalm 27, verse 1 through 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I will fear no one. The Lord protects me from all danger. I will never be afraid. When evil men that have crossed the border Ill, illegally, uh, that are that are that didn't check in, didn't register, try to try to attack me and kill me. They stumble and fall. Even if a whole army surrounds me, the psalmist said, "I will not be afraid." That's some statement. Even if enemies attack me, I will still trust in God. Listen, by hearing this podcast, you are in the victory, success 
power, might, dominion, territory. And it's up to you. I want you to start speaking the word of God and talking in the direction that you want your life to move. If you want to move in power and might and dominion and healing and favor and prosperity, then I want you to talk that way. I'm teaching on prosperity this month on YouTube. I'd like you to hear it. In fact, I've already put up a more than 100 verses on uh, prosperity. They're called prosperity scriptures. And so you can listen to that and agree. Say, yes, that's what, what you're doing, Lord. That's what, what you're happening to me. I receive that, Lord. Talk that way to God and put the word of God in you. It's going to be more important than ever before. I mean, these uh, human traffickers, they might, you don't even know it. They might have their eye on trying to kidnap your granddaughter. So you better be strong. And if you're a tither and a giver, you better focus on the fact that God's rebuking the devourer for your sake. I've been in a situation where I've had guns, a gun aimed at me several times from really close. And I thought I was finished, but God rescued me. And part of that has to do with the fact that I'm believing God for like Psalm 27 that I just read you. And I'm a tither. And part of that, God's not only going to open the windows of heaven for you, he's going to rebuke the devourer for, your, for my sake. And he's done that for me a number of times. And I've testified a few times on these podcasts. Learn what to do when you don't feel like doing anything. That's important because if you f stop, if you just fold your hands and do nothing, if you act like everybody else and don't seek God, then God has no supernatural help in your life because God does one thing on planet Earth. Jeremiah 112, he watches over his word to perform his word. Now, that includes millions and millions of things that he's doing, but it's always in line with his word and it's always by trusting him. OK, in the whole universe, the history of the universe, however long that was, gazillions of years, God wants one thing. He wants to be believed for without faith. It's impossible to please God for they that come to God not only need to believe that he is, but that he's a rewarder, a wage payer, a benefiter of those that diligently seek him. And so by hearing this podcast regularly, uh, by listening to the YouTube videos that I have up and others, other guys too, uh, that's and reading your Bible and reading your scripture cards and stuff like that. You're showing God that you're diligently seeking him. OK, when you drive by uh, when I let me just say this. When I first got saved, the doc, I, I was a drug addict and st stupid stuff like that, drinking every day, alcoholic. I don't say I'm an alcoholic anymore. I quit saying that because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old guy died. A new guy came along, and that's me. All right? So I, w I was uh, given a bad doctor's report at Kaiser Hospital that because my heart would, would beat, and then it would stop. I could feel it beating hard, and then it would just stop. And I'm saying, come on. I put my hand on my chest and start moving my, my own chest, my breast bo bone or whatever you call that and trying to get my heart to beat and then it would start beating and then it would stop and then it would beat again. So I went to Dr. Kaiser Hospital. I, I was just barely saved now, just a, a few days, a few weeks. Uh, and it, that happened to me, I think, from riotous living. So anyway, the doctors never heard any heartbeat like that before. They called it never other nurses and, and people who are around other doctors and said, listen to this guy. Have you ever heard anything like this? No, they never heard anything like this. I said, well, what do you say? How can you help me? They said, we don't know how to help you. Uh, the best thing you can do is just rest. Don't put any strain on your body. And at the most, you'll be lucky if you live two years. They told me that in 1975. I was supposed to be dead before 1977. Okay. And so I went to church. I was a, tried to stop cussing and uh, drinking and all that kind of stuff, which I did. And I was asking everybody for prayer because the doctor said I'm going to die. As a matter of fact, I felt from that, when I was at the doctor that I could have died in front of them. That's how bad I felt. Okay. Miserable. Every day I'd wake up and I wouldn't, wouldn't know if I was going to live through that day.
And then later, as I read Deuteronomy 28, like the first 14, 15 verses are just great things that are part of the blessing of Abraham that belong to every single Christian. Man, I love that. But when I read this, the next part from like 14 or 15 on through verse 60, it talked about the curse. Huh. I saw stuff like the itch, hemorrhoids, uh, losing your mind, unfaithful spouse, kids hooked on going on, wayward kids going on drugs. And then I found a verse that said, at night, you will wish it was morning. And in the morning, you would wish it was night because you don't think you're going to see morning or night. That was me. That was a photograph of me. People got around me and said, uh, Glenn, listen, dude, you're going to die if you keep asking all these Christians to pray for you. It's not about that. It's about you finding scriptures that promise you what you need and re rehearsing them, reading them, confessing them, using them in prayer and praise and thanksgiving to God and stuff like that, using them to resist the devil like Jesus did when he was tempted of the devil after fasting 40 days. You got to do that. Put the word of God in you on healing. Don't study the book of the Revelation, but I'm interested in the Revelation. I, I know that strange things are going to happen and uh, all this stuff. No, They said no. You're going to die if you read the book of the Revelation before you get healed. So just focus on getting healed. How do I do that? By finding the scriptures on healing, by reading the miracles of Jesus and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and say whatever Jesus did for them, he'll do for me because God's no respecter of persons and because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, Hebrews 13, 8. So I read all the healing scriptures, wrote them down, rehearsing them. I didn't read my Bible. I read the scripture cards only for a long time, and I got healed. That's why I try to hammer you with the Word of God. I know that whatever your need is, if you find the scriptures that promise you what you need and stick with them, eventually what, eventually, what you need will be setting in your front yard. Be in your house. Be in your life. Praise God. Amen. So when I got saved and later uh, went to Bible school, later became a pastor, my goal was to teach people the Word of God. I was in prayer one night, and I thought I was going to die that night, of course. And I heard a voice. I can't say it was a physical voice. I don't know what it was. But it said, if you teach my people how to appropriate my promises, I will keep you alive. I didn't know anything about appropriating any promise of God. But that was my focus. And I said, God, I promise I will learn about how to appropriate your promises. I will teach that. And the next day, I found a verse, Psalm 118, 17. It said, you shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Saints, I'm out of time. I speak blessing, increase, power, might, dominion to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Have a great day. Thank you, Pastor Glenn. Pastor Glenn's daily podcast is available on Spotify, his Pillars of Faith Christian app, and YouTube. I encourage you to support Pastor Glenn by listening to his podcast daily and watching his Bible teachings on YouTube. By sharing his content and increasing his viewership, we can get the gospel of Jesus Christ to more people across the globe. Let's encourage our friends and family to get inspired by God's Word with Pastor Glenn's teachings.